a lot of students struggle with irregular verbs. I mean, it seems like they don't follow any rules, right? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you five steps that you can follow to master irregular verbs in Spanish. I'm also going to give you some cool tips so you can start applying these steps right now. So, I have very bad news for you. In Spanish, we have a lot of irregular verbs and we use them a lot. I'm sorry, nos gusta la mala vida, we like to suffer. So how are you going to do to handle these verbs? Step number one, focus. And this focus is going to be divided into two sub-steps. When I say focus, you need to decide what type of Spanish you're learning. Are you learning Spanish to communicate in Mexico or Latin America? Because if that's the case, you shouldn't be learning vosotros if you want to save yourself some space with endings, pronouns, and all of this, okay? So if you're not going to Spain or you're not interested in learning Castilian Spanish, you can skip vosotros. Also, focus on one tense at a time. If I were to ask you, what do you think is easier to conjugate, English or Spanish? Probably English, right? Do you know why? Because of the endings. In Spanish, the present tense requires 18 different endings. In English, you guys just have two. So when you focus on one tense at a time, you're not stretching yourself, but also you're able to start noticing patterns that are going to help you. So step number two, do not confuse irregular verbs with the stem changing verbs. When I start teaching irregular verbs, a lot of students are like, oh my God, no, there are so many irregular verbs in Spanish. Mm, actually, that's not true. There are many stem, ch stem changing verbs in Spanish, but these are not the same as irregular. Check this example, querer versus ir. Ear is wild, it's odd, it seems that it doesn't follow any rules. Yo voy, tú vas, él va, nosotros vamos. What about querer? Yo quiero, tú quieres, nosotros queremos, ellos quieren. If you check this, when we conjugate a stem changing verb, we just do minor modifications and these changes are going to be changing a vowel or a consonant for pronunciation or spelling purposes. However, we keep using the regular endings. So these stem changing verbs are not actually that scary. But if you look here, oof, those are a lot of big changes, right? So don't worry about stem changing verbs, worry about the regular ones. Step number three, and pay attention because this one is really important. Group irregular verbs by patterns. Yeah, you heard that correctly. Irregular verbs seem that they don't follow any rules, but they actually do. Let's take the present tense as an example. In the present tense, many irregular verbs are going to affect yo. And this effect is going to impact the endings. We have verbs that end in oi, or verbs that end in go. For example, yo voy, yo soy, yo estoy, yo doy. Yo hago, yo digo, yo tengo, yo vengo, right? But guess what? Many of those irregular verbs for yo are not going to be irregular for the other subjects. Let's take tener as an example, right? Everybody learns tener and they are like, oh my God, it's irregular. No, it's irregular for you. Yo tengo, but for the other subjects, it's going to be a stem changing verb. Yo tengo, tú tienes, ella tiene, nosotros tenemos. Not so scary, right? The same happens with the period tense. In the period tense, however, the change is going to impact the roots, the endings, and all the subjects. Just to give you a little heads up, when we talk about roots, we refer to the part of the verb before the infinitive ending. 
So these roots in the prairie tense are going to be, you're going to be able to group them. For example, we have roots that have U and B on them. For example, yo estuve, verb star, yo tuve, verb tener, yo anduve, verb andar. We also have verbs whose root have U. For example, tú pusiste, that's poner, tú supiste, that's saber, o tú pudiste, that's poder. We also have this other pattern when we have u, j. Yo conduje, that's conducir, o yo traduje, I translate. So if you start seeing these patterns and grouping them, your starting time is going to get more effective and it's going to be way easier on you too. So what about the future and the conditional? Well, I have great news for you. The future and the conditional tenses have very few irregular verbs. And better news, the irregular verbs that we have in the future tense are also going to be irregular in the conditional tense, which means that you are going to use the same irregular roots for these tenses. You're only going to change the endings, obviously. For example, yo tendré, yo tendría. You see, that's pretty easy, right? Let's go to step number four. Ojo, and ojo, this, you have to be careful with this. Watch out for the verbs offspring, the babies. So in Spanish, many irregular verbs are used as a suffix to create other verbs. This means that they are going to follow the same patterns. Let me put this in human words, okay? So let's imagine that you see your friend and their baby, and you're going to see that the baby has his mother or his father's smile. And you're going to go and say, oh my God, he looks just like you. It's the same with verbs. Some Spanish verbs have their own babies, and these babies are going to look like them, and they are going to behave like them, conjugation wise. For example, let's take suponer, to suppose, to guess. Suponer is the baby of poner, which means that when we conjugate suponer, we are going to use the patterns of the dad poner. For example, yo pongo, yo supongo, yo puse, yo supuse, okay? The same happens with other verbs, for example, tener, and mantener. Yo tengo, that's the pattern of the dad, tener, and the kid is going to do the same. Yo mantengo. Tú mantienes, tú tienes. So check the last example, distraer. Can you tell who is distraer's dad? That's right, that's traer, which means that the patterns that we apply to traer are going to be applied to distraer. Yo traigo, yo me distraigo, okay? And as a tip, these rules for offspring are also applied to stem changing verbs, which means that if a stem changing verb is used at the end of one of these verbs, you also have to follow these rules. You have this example right here with mantener. Remember that tener, the parent, is irregular for yo. Yo tengo, yo mantengo. However, it's a stem changing verb for the rest of the subjects. Tú tienes, tú mantienes. Yo pido, yo despido, okay? So keep that in mind and that's going to help you conjugate easier and quicker. Finally, the last step, and this one is crucial, practice. Knowing these rules is not the same as applying them. So you need to get comfortable with them. So what can you do to practice? Well, that's very simple. First, take a lot of conjugation quizzes. I actually have a lot of quizzes for irregular verbs in tellmespanish.com. Second, write sentences. Write sentences using irregular verbs in different tenses with different subjects 
so you can practice all of these patterns. And finally, and most importantly, use these irregular verbs in your conversations. Daniela, I don't have a, a conversation partner. What do I do? You can chat with yourself. For example, I no pude ir porque no puse la alarma. I couldn't go because I didn't put my alarm. You see, it's quite simple. So don't be shy in practice. So before we finish this video, I want to invite you to check this lesson on my Spanish immersion channel. That way you get to practice your listening and comprehension a little bit more. Also, don't forget about checking tellmeinspanish.com so you get to practice with conjugation quizzes. So if you like the video, it would really help me if you can give me a like. I hope to see you soon, guys. Bye.